Who do we got on the phone, Colin? B. Duh. Our good friend from Baltimore, Olympic gold medalist Bernard Hollywood Williams. We should also mention former Florida Gator, uh, track and field star. How you doing, B Dub? I'm doing fantastic, my brothers. How are you all? Ah, uh, doing well, doing well, my friend. Got to get into what is one of the lead stories of the day with you. It does come out of uh, our former hometown of Gainesville with the Florida right. Gators and uh, dropping the Gator bait cheer. And of course. I think you would agree with me that we both right. we both spent a lot of time on the Florida Gator campus. Uh, first off, let me ask you: Have you caught wind of this story yet? No, no. Oh man, you got to turn on the news, brother. You got to turn on the news. It's oh. all over. So we are dropping, <laughs> we are dropping the Gator bait cheer. It is is being banned from campus. It's a, it's a real thing. Uh, removing it because it it has a racial history. It has a racial overtone in history. It goes back to. <laughs> I swear, man, you're laughing and I'm trying to take this seriously. I'm trying to take this seriously for, for our brothers like you, you know, and and yeah. apparently this involved a practice of stealing African-American babies from slave mothers, essentially, and using them to bait alligators. Now, I, I said earlier in the show, I don't believe this actually was a widespread pact practice in history. But what I do believe is that somewhere along the, along the line, it became a joke of a nickname that was addressed to African-American children. It became a, a, to slave, slave children, essentially. Uh, mm. It was a racist term for them. Now, 1995, Lawrence Wright says, if you ain't a gator, you must be gator bait. And ever since that moment, no one on the history of University of Florida campus has ever used gator bait as a racist term. I think we can agree on that. Am I correct? Correct. Yeah. So we have not been using it that way, but we didn't know about this history from 100 years ago that this was essentially used as a, as a, a racial slur nickname for African-American children. So for that reason, I fully stand by its removal for the University of Florida simply because it does have that connotation, whether or not this practice happened in history, and I really hope it didn't. Uh, but because of the nickname, that's enough to remove it, is it not? No, no, no. I've been saying Gator Bates for years. Now listen, just because, next thing you know, they're going to stop the Seminoles from chopping Gator heads off because the Animal Humane Society is mad that you're chopping Gator heads off. Look, man, I don't care what people say. You can continue to remove certain symbols, songs, or whatever. It's not in the symbol. It's all about how you treat people, okay? It's all on how you remove the action, not the symbols. So, no, I don't think so. See, that's that's something that's always key to me, is, is I got to always think that intent is important. You know, we talked about this situation with, um, with Oklahoma State, or, or I'm sorry, with Clemson, with Clemson, where the, where the coach is essentially saying to the player, we don't use that word, but uses the word back to that player. That's a teaching moment. That is not an insult or in any way meant to offend that particular player. That's a teaching moment, a teaching moment in the same way that the player was using the word for its shock value, the coach was using the word for its shock value for a positive teaching moment. I can stand behind that. I can get behind that and I can understand that. Should the word ever be used at all? No, I can agree with that as well. But I'm not going to get mad at the guy who uses the word in a teaching moment. And I'm also not going to get mad at somebody that takes a forgotten phrase from 100 years ago in history. We now have a new definition. All Gator bait means to a Florida Gator fan is the Gator's next opponent, most specifically in right. Florida State Seminoles. Um, you know, that is the connotation and intent of Gator bait today. However, once it becomes brought to the forefront that, hey, this does have this history, do we need to have a willingness to change? Well, it, well, you can have a willingness to change, and that's okay. I'm just saying, um, whatever your meaning is for Gator Bait, if they decided you got some information and this is how you interpret it, then, I mean, that's okay. But it's for me personally, um, you know, it's just every year it's a new meaning that brings up something with new knowledge. But whatever my interpretation is, that's why Drew Brees got in trouble. He got in trouble because he said what the flag means to me. You know, what the flag means to me is what my grandfathers have fought and my grandfathers. He got in trouble for saying that, like, because he didn't think about 
uh, the, the uh, social injustice of black people. And because he elaborated on what his, what his meaning was to the flag and didn't really focus on black people's injustice, that's why he got in trouble. And like I told you, it goes back to interpretation. So whatever your interpretation is, you know, you roll with that. But if you got new knowledge about certain things and you want to switch the interpretation and y'all make that effort, that's fine, too. I want to finish on this. Josh Gordon, uh, former NFL wide receiver, is applying for a reinstatement to the NFL to try and join a, an NFL team. He would have to serve uh, probably a two-game suspension before he was able to return to any team. He's been suspended seven times from the league for what they call PED issues, but what ultimately most of these suspensions boil down to was marijuana issues. Um, the other sports leagues, the NBA has relaxed their medical, their marijuana policies. Uh, Major League Baseball basically never had a policy against marijuana in place. Um, we've seen Rob Gronkowski. He has led efforts to try and promote the use of, of, of medical marijuana, which I think would be a good substitute perhaps to some of the painkillers uh, that some of these guys get addicted to. So Jake, let me come back to you with this. Josh Gordon to me seems like a victim of the marijuana policy and they really try to hammer this down by putting it under the PED category. Is he simply a bad guy or is he a victim of this policy? Yeah, I mean, I think he's a victim of of the policy because the it... it Really, the, the policy for the NFL falls under PEDs and substances of abuse. And that's why, number one, Josh Gordon kind of gets a bad rap. You know, he gets labeled PEDs. He's, all he's doing is, is smoking smoking weed. And so I, listen, I, I've, I've said for a long time that I, you know, I don't understand why it's illegal. I don't understand why as as it, as a pain management, especially tool, for football. It, it, if the yeah. other leagues are allowing it, if baseball yeah. allows it, or they don't, they don't necessarily allow it, but they don't test for it. If the the NBA has relaxed their policies, and we've all heard the rumors about yeah. players smoking at halftime yeah. uh, in in locker rooms, the NFL. With so much contact, with the amount of damage you put to your body week in and week out, the soreness that these guys feel on a, on a Monday morning, doesn't it make sense to give them alternatives other than just pain medication, which can be very addictive and can lead to greater problems down the road? Bernard, always appreciate you joining us. Great having you as a part of the show. Hope things stay well in Baltimore over the weekend. Looking forward to talking to you again next week, my friend. Thanks for having me.